Musgrave, the Ducks just finished their regular season. What are you going to do now? We're going to Disneyland. And here you go. Musgrave and the Ducks in the Magic Kingdom. The happiest place on Earth. Although that's not the way Musgrave remembers it. Yeah, I was here when, uh, when we were little kids and, uh, with my folks. And I remember uh, my little brother, Doug, he lost, uh, he let go of his balloon and it floated away. And I can't, I can't remember him ever crying so much. He cried for hours on that. The things got a little goofy on the Ducks' visit to Disneyland. Mickey Mouse played center during a little Disney scrimmage. There were team photos and more team photos. Hey, who's that duck in the duck uniform? The football players saw it all on this day. It started with the Christmas parade. After that, it was time for some rides. There were rides that got them wet and a few that kept them dry. Some rides had heads spinning. It's nice. We're having fun. We're having fun. <laughs> that teacup thing was a little scary. Though. Yeah, it was a little. It yeah, had me spinning teacup. around. Roy was trying to make me sick out there, and I was trying to stay cool that with her. No it was getting with me a little bit. I don't like that. There were no predictions out of the Magic Kingdom. Mickey wouldn't commit to a Ducks victory in the Freedom Bowl. But you have to believe this guy is picking him. It's written all over his jersey. I guess you can hear who's standing next to me. It is the duck, ladies and gentlemen. I can't ask him any questions. It's not good to throw that thing in there like that. Uh, <laughs> who do you think's going to win tonight? Obvious question. What a dumb question, huh? Hey, did you meet your pal at Disneyland? Did you? Who'd win in a fight? I just want to know. Oh, hands down, huh? You, right? All right. But Bill Musgrave's going to throw a few touchdown passes, huh? All right. Got any special cheers for us tonight? That is great. It's kind of an MC Hammer type deal or what? All right. You can't touch this. All right. Michael. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Phil, and thank you, the duck. Well, the kickoff's a little less than 30 minutes away now. The butterflies beginning to churn in the stomachs of the players, including Oregon quarterback Bill Musgrave. Now, coming up, you're going to get to meet the Oregon Ducks' most valuable player in a way you've never known him before. History has shown that for the Oregon Ducks to be successful on the football field in recent years, they need quarterback Bill Musgrave. He remains relatively unknown nationally, but his achievements really rank with the greats of all time. Taking a look at Pac-10 Conference passing yardage statistics, Musgrave right now ranks number five in career yardage, and he could be number three by the end of the Freedom Bowl game tonight. The names around him all went on to play pro football. For getting the ball into the end zone, Musgrave is second only to John Elway. In fact, greats like uh, Rodney Pete and Jim Plunkett did not match Musgrave. I spent a day with Musgrave recently. I found him to be a quiet and unassuming, yet extremely intelligent and extremely competitive. As far back as anybody can remember, Bill Musgrave has been extremely bright and extremely competitive. He began making the number 14 famous at Grand Junction High School, where he was named Colorado's Prep Athlete of the Year and the state's top scholar athlete. Because Grand Junction is somewhat isolated, Musgrave was not heavily recruited. But the Ducks were interested, and after a walk on the Oregon campus, Musgrave was old. I couldn't believe that the grass was green in January. I always lived in Colorado, and the grass dies in the winter, and it's kind of ugly, but... Uh, and I thought, boy, this is really West Coast right here, a uh, destination resort or something like that. Five years later, there are no regrets from either side. Musgrave has rewritten the Oregon record books and is the winningest quarterback in school history. He does not have a classic arm or perfect technique, but Musgrave is a great performer who thrives on challenges, and his presence makes those around him better. Well, Bill Musgrave probably uh, has done uh, as much or more for Oregon football in, in the four years that he's played than any player that's ever played at the University of Oregon. His competitive nature, uh, his leadership, I think those two things, when you look at what he's done for this program, will stand out. The Musgrave style is to lead by example and his desire to win. In the huddle, he's a man of few words, ready to answer questions, but not deliver lectures. You know, people don't need to be yelled at. They know they need to do better. I know when I need to do better, and uh, someone yelling at me 
like a teammate or someone uh, criticize me isn't going to spur me on. With Musgrave in charge, the Ducks are a team with great chemistry and feeling for each other. There's joy in playing the game and in taking a risk every now and then. Musgrave and his receivers often play a game within the game. When, on a broken play, he'll just throw the ball up for grabs. It may not be really smart passes, but if I just put it up there, Tony Hargain, Joe Reitzig, uh, Jeff Thomason, they're going to go up and they're going to have a good shot at getting it. And that's, you know, they, they want me to throw it up like that, too. They'd rather have me throw uh, you know, a crazy pass like that than just hold on to it. Whatever the method, Musgrave makes it work better than it's ever worked in Eugene. Although Musgrave turned 23 years old last month, inside he's still all boy. He has the same passion for video games now that he had in his junior high school days in Colorado, when his mom would take him and some buddies to the local arcade every Friday and Saturday night. We would just play video games for hours, probably from 6 until 10 when our moms came to pick us up. and. Uh... We just had a great time. We'd have little competitions and set up like little brackets and uh, have tournaments and everything. Since winning at Video Joust is just as important to Musgrave as beating UCLA, the Ducks' most valuable player is believed to have suffered college football's first injury from video games. It's funny because this is one of the games that I kind of uh, messed up my finger on because I was trying to flap so hard. And you have to flap hard and land right on their head, just see if you can just nail them. And then you try to catch their egg. Well, then I got a big blister underneath this callus because I was uh, trying to flap so fast to try to, you know, get these guys. And I was playing with my um, roommate, and we were trying to get the high score. Kind of got infected the next week, and uh, I think I missed one day, like a Monday before Arizona game, just to finally let, let it kind of calm down a little bit. But uh, it's pretty embarrassing. Got my share of flack from my uh, teammates and everybody. Because <laughs> they knew that I liked video games, but they didn't know that uh, you could really get, get your hand hurt playing them so intensely. Is that why Rich Brooks wasn't smiling there for a couple weeks? Yes. I don't know. I think he was kind of upset. He thought that was a pretty stupid injury to have. He's probably right. Musgrave has recovered from his bout with video finger and is back at the controls every chance he gets. He says the games help his peripheral vision and his hand-eye coordination, but the truth is, Musgrave is addicted. There for a while, it got kind of bad. Like, uh, winter term, when I don't have a lot to do, I always come here, like, between class. And uh, kind of when maybe I should be studying or doing something, but uh, I'm taking a nap, but I just, I get in here and uh, I like it. Musgrave's hours in the arcades have not come at the expense of his studies. No player in Division I combines academics and football at the level Musgrave does. He's been named the 1990 Academic All-American of the Year. He has completed school with a 3.5 grade point average and has earned his degree in finance, a field which fascinates him. It's kind of neat to see uh, how interest rates work and uh, I like seeing and what happens on Wall Street, I like reading the Wall Street Journal and seeing the way people's emotions kind of play with uh, you know, interest rates or securities and things like that. Earlier this month, Musgrave was honored by the National Football Foundation and presented with a $15,000 scholarship for postgraduate studies. He flew to New York for the banquet and returned home acting like a kid back from his first trip to Disneyland. Yeah, it was just... Uh, Incredible to see all those famous players. Uh, Doak Walker, Kyle Rote was there, and uh, I sat by Jim Plunkett at the head table, and all the people that I met, and I had my camera with me, so I took pictures with everyone I saw. And, uh... <laughs> Musgrave is considering using the scholarship money for law school, but his first goal is to play pro football. Talk of the NFL immediately brings up talk of Musgrave's arm strength and technique, which are not in the NFL mold. Insinuation that his arm may not be good enough irritates those around him, but does not seem to bother Musgrave. Not really. I think uh, I think it's probably true, but I think I've, I throw a lot better than I used to. So uh, I think I've got a lot of you know gains to be made too. So uh, maybe if a team will you know, give me a shot, I can keep improving for them. All I can say is uh, look at the look at the records. Uh, he's done it in the toughest conference in the country. He's taken us to two straight bowl games. 
He's broken uh, every passing record by some great quarterbacks in Oregon history. He's surpassed a lot of them in Pac-10 history. He's a winner. Somebody better get smart and take a look at him, I'll tell you that. Well, the Pro Scouts are in attendance tonight as Musgrave plays his final game for the Ducks. Well, you can talk about the offensive stars, Michael, but you got to talk about the defense, too, because, well, defense helps you win a football game, and it helps in a successful season, and the Oregon defense is outstanding. When we come back, we'll talk about two reasons why they're so good. In addition to putting together great trucks like the new rodeo. Now tonight's game is a classic matchup. Colorado State loves to run the football, and the Oregon Ducks are pretty good against stopping the run. They rank nationally in that category. Now football games are won and lost at the line of scrimmage, and for Colorado State to be successful tonight, they're going to have to handle a couple of outstanding Oregon linemen, Matt Labounty and Marcus Woods, two of the finest defensive players in the Pac-10. College recruiters were not beating down doors to speak to Marcus Woods three years ago. You see, Woods stands six feet, two inches tall, and that's supposed to be too short for major college nose tackles. But Oregon wanted the Corvallis High Star, and this season, number 69 has proven the Ducks right. Woods leads the Ducks with 17 tackles for losses, and his eight quarterback sacks are the most ever by an Oregon nose tackle. All this despite playing hurt much of the year. Woods ignores the pain, just like he does the talk about being too short. You know, my mom's you know, taught me a lot. You can do anything you want to do, no matter. There's no standards for anything. I can't let that stop me. I mean, if that's going to stop someone else, I know it's, it's not going to stop me. And I, I'll work whatever it takes to do it. I'll, I'll do it. It doesn't make any difference how short I am, because I think I have better leverage being shorter. There's no question that Woods knows how to use his 283 pounds to hit full advantage, and that's something others just can't ignore. League coaches voted Woods second team all Pac-10. And College Football Weekly now ranks Woods as the fifth best nose tackle in America. It's a ranking that Oregon coaches think might be a little low. It takes two guys to block it. And, uh, you know, when he's, when he's healthy, he's as good as any around. Uh, you know, and he sometimes, he, you know, he's not a picture-perfect tackler, but, you know, he'll knock him down, he'll belly bump him, he'll do anything, he'll throw himself into him, you know, and uh, he's just determined. Woods is determined to try and play pro football after college, even though the NFL is sure to say he's just a little too short. But he's also working for a degree in political science. He's interested in governments and how they operate. Like to be an ambassador in a foreign country or something? Or? Yeah, that'd be nice. Like to be ambassador to Jamaica or something. <laughs> something. <laughs> that'd be nice. Pac-10 coaches would love to see Woods working in some far-off land, but they know he'll be back for his senior season in 1991. And Woods is taking things one step at a time. Tonight, he gets a chance to show how well he performs in those warmer climates. Matt Labounty had 10 sacks this year. The junior has become Oregon's all-time sack leader with 20 and a half. But it's really no big deal. No, I just try to get the job done. And if some good things happen, then I'm happy. But if, you know, if we're stopping them and we're going three and out, that's just fine as getting a sack. Labounty is one of those self-made players. Not real big, but determined, especially when it comes to sacking the quarterback. You know, some, of those, some of those sacks have come just because of, of continuous moving. He may get knocked down, but he gets back up and, uh, you know, continues to, to go after the play. <laughs> Well, Coach Sheffield, my position coach, spends a lot of time working uh, on technique with me and everybody else. And I think as far as that goes, I mean, that's helped out more than anything just because of my undersize. By Pac-10 standards, it is a small package, only 6'4 and 246 pounds. But Labounty makes it all work through hard work. He's learned the best ways to get into the backfield and disrupt things against Colorado State tonight, he will do those same things. The game plan is once again fundamental and simple. Stop the running game and uh, win. <laughs>